Hello, my name is Christopher, and today I'm going to show you how to install Mail Pit on Portainer. So a little bit about this series, I'm going over home labs, installing things, getting things set up, everything like that. So if you're interested in that, subscribe, comment, like, and support the channel, and let's get started. I wanted to let y'all know about the Big Bear community. We just launched a uh, community on community.bigbeartechworld.com. It's based on Discourse, so go on there, join it, and uh, say hi. So. Let's get back to your registered programming. So this is what we'll be installing today, a mail pit. This makes it to where you can set up a local SMTP server and send all your local mail to it. Like if you're running like a application that, re uh, that required an SMTP server or you wanted email from that, uh, you could set up this and be able to see all the emails in the UI. So it's pretty neat, and it did replace MailHog, which is no longer maintained. So we'll get to uh, going over it. So I'm going to start on Big Bear Video Assets. There will be a link down in the YouTube description to get to this. I'm going to scroll down to how to install MailPit on Portainer. Then I'm going to go into the Docker Compose. So version 3 of Docker Compose is being used. I'm going to set some services, and then the one service underneath the service is, is called App. And then the image is coming off of Docker Hub because there's no year before this. And um, it's using a V1.7 for the Docker image tag. And then container names, mail pit. Restart is unless stopped. So if you stop it for any reason, it will not try to restart. But if it fails or any other reason, then it will try to restart. I'm going to set some uh, volumes. So mail pit data is using a volume down here. The local driver and then uh, on the container is data this is on the host side and this is on the container side then i'm going to set environment variable so time zone is utc but you can change this to your time zone and then i'm going to set some ports so 8025 and 8025 so this is on the host side the, the left and on the right side is the container side and then 1025 uh, tw is the SMTP port, and that's on the host, and this is on the container side. So the web UI and the SMTP port. So the left is the host, and the right is the container. Okay, now, so the volume is set to the local driver and mail pit data. So I'm going to go over here to copy raw file, and then I'm going to go to my portainer and get it installed. So I'm going to start on portainer's dashboard. I'm going to go to local, stacks, and then add stack. And then I'm going to name the stack mail pit uh, stack. And then I'm going to come down here to the web editor. And then I'm going to paste in the Docker and Bose that we copied. And then I'm going to uh, deploy the stack down here. Now it's deployed and it's up and running. So now I'm going to go over the stack options. So in my portainer, I'm going to go to ma mail pit stack where we named it. And then, so you can see the stack right here. You can have an editor to where you can change the Docker compose and then you can update the stack. Now repull image and redeploy means that it's going to repull the image off the registry again, update the local cache and then redeploy it. So, so that'd be great for if you have a latest tag on here. Or if the de developer pushes an update to this exact same tag. So um, you can see your containers down here. And you can see a little bit of information about them. The IP address, the published ports, and the access control. So that's all about the stack options. So now we'll go over the container options. So I'm going to go into containers down here when you're in the stack. And mail pit. So you see some information up here, the ID, the name, the status, the cr a created, and start time. You can see logs, inspect, stats, console, and attach. Logs are great for debugging, and it tells you where the starting server is, so 8025. And um, start, stop, kill, restart, pause, resume, remove, recreate, and duplicate, and edit. You can see access controls. You can create an image. You can see container details like the image uh, of the Shea and then port configuration. So this is on the host side and this is on the container side. 
and it's listed on all uh, IPs. So the entry point is mail pit. The environment variables that are set, the, the labels, the restart policy, so none on failure, always, unless stopped. So you can change it and then update it. You can see the volumes that are being used. So host and then uh, container. You can see it cr I created a network down here for a bridge. So that's a little about the container options. So now I built a script to where it's easy to test the SMTP server. So I'm going to start on Big Bear Scripts. There will be a link down in the YouTube description to get to this. I'm going to go to test SMTP connection. And then I will be running this right here, but I'm going to go into run.sh. So we're going to set some default values for the server, the port, the sender, the recipient, the subject, the message. And uh, it's just a regular HTML. And um, enter the SMTP server. So it's going to ask the user to do that, or it's going to set the default one that's up here. And it's going to do the same thing with the port and same thing with the email and same thing with the recipient email and same thing with the email subject and message body. So uh, then it's going to come down here, put it all together, then use Telnet to send it to the SMTP server and the SMTP port down here. So that's a little bit about what the script does. So I'm going to go backwards and I'm going to copy this right here. And then I'm going to go to my terminal and send the, uh, the HTML to the SMTP server. So I wanted to let you know uh, about the Big Bear Club. Uh, 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 you can join it, and it greatly supports this channel, and I very much appreciate it. So uh, if you'd like to join the Big Bear Club, you can go down the YouTube description and uh, go to my Ko-Fi link and join it from there. So let's get back to registered programming. So I'm going to use my terminal on my computer. So I'm going to paste it in, and you will need Telnet installed. So I'm going to return or enter, and then now you're going to put your IP address for your portainer in. So 192. Okay, now once you got your IP address in, you return or enter. And then I'm going to go with 1025 because that's the port. And then send your email. All, all, all these are the, the default used, so... We're ready to send the email now. So now it's sent and it should be in mail pit. So now I'm going to go to the portainer's IP address and then 8025 on the end. So I'm going to return or enter. So now you can see the email that we just sent three minutes ago. So you can go into it, you can see the HTML, the HTML source, the text, the headers, raw. Um, you can go up here to download the raw message, the HTML body, the text body. When, once you get more emails in, you can switch between emails. You can delete the email, mark is unread, the message date, the size of the message. You can change the, um, the theme to light and to dark and to auto. So you can return, you can search a mailbox, you can set how many are on the page right here, and you can delete all the emails, and you can mark all, all as read. So you can go in here and mark unread. Now you can hit mark all a read, and then it'll mark all, all read. So that's a little bit about MailPit. So I just went over step by step on getting MailPit running on Portainer. So if you like this tutorial, subscribe, comment, like, and support the channel. And if you have any video suggestions or you need community support, you can go down to the Big Bear community and join our forum. There's a link in the YouTube description, so stay tuned for more.